Your brothers and sisters, um, first and foremost, if I can have everyone's silence, inshallah, everyone's attention. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا and make mention in the book of Ibrahim alayhi salam because he was a man of truth, Siddiq, Nabiya, and a prophet. And today we really try to dig a little bit into the tafsir of the meaning of the word Siddiq. Because truthfulness in, you know, in, in at least our modern uh, daily usage of the English language, at least when we say truthfulness, what we usually mean is truthfulness in what? Truthfulness in? I'm trying to get some money. Speech, not truthfulness in tongue. Truthfulness in speech, right? Usually when we say tell the truth, we mean tell the truth with your tongue. Speak the truth, right? Or, you know, in, in father language, tell the truth, right? It's funny. <laughs> tell the truth. That's what truthfulness means, right? Now, in Islam, it's so much more than that. So much more than that. And there's many different ways to understand this. Number one, yes, speaking the truth. And as the Mufassirin say, Siddiq, that the person has to tell the truth, he never lies. A person who's used to telling the truth. And we, we, we remember the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, from Ibn Mas'ud, Sahih Muslim, that Rasulullah said, that truthfulness, so this is telling the truth, leads to righteousness, righteousness. And righteousness leads to paradise. And the Prophet said, that verily a person tells the truth to an extent, until he's written with Allah, Allah has your name, Siddiqah, a truthful person. And then the Prophet said, in the kabi, that very line, yahdi al fujur, it leads you to open shamelessness and sin against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa in al fujur, and then that type of disobedience, yahdi il nar, that leads you to hellfire. So the Prophet then said, in the rajula, la yakdib, that verily a person will lie, hatta yuktaba kadab. That a person will lie until he's written with Allah, liar. Right? And this is something that's very significant as we said. Once you get into the habit of lying, you'll never stop. You'll never stop. It's not that you fell into lying one time here and there. You know, you, you felt the pressure of a situation, so you lied to get yourself out of that situation. It's not that. Once you get used to lying about everything, then you'll become a liar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will brand you as a liar. And when you're raised on the day of judgment, it'll be, where is the kathab? Because that's what Imam al I didn't mention that in the khutbah. Think about that. Allah on the day of judgment, when He calls you, this is what Nawi rahimahullah said in his shara, in his explanation of the hadith. Allah will say, where is the liar? Where is the kathab? Which liar? So and so. Bring the liar over here. Right? So be extremely careful when you speak, making sure that you don't lie. And you know, subhanAllah, lying always catches up to you in life. Always, always. You get into the habit of lying, it's going to catch up to you somehow in life. Right? And once people, you know, understand, or once people catch you in a lie, then nothing you say will ever have credibility again. Right? You guys know the story of the boy who cried wolf. It's not a hadith. Very powerful story though, honestly. This story uh, shook me when I was a kid. Right? And the story was, was basically that there is the boy who was entrusted with watching the sheep and, and he was told by his people that whenever a wolf comes, what do you do? You cry wolf, wolf, right? So one time he cried wolf, wolf, everybody came running out and then they saw that there was no wolf. He was lying. He played a joke, right? Second time he did it, everybody came out, no wolf. Third time, an actual wolf came and started devouring all of the sheep, and he cried, wolf, 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 nobody came out. Nobody came out. So in the process, he lost everything. And that really happens in life, subhanAllah. Anytime you're a liar, things catch up with you in life. 
People start texting you in your lives and your credibility goes away. Most importantly, your credibility with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes away. So lying in speech is something extremely hated in Islam to the point that the Prophet said, a Muslim, a believer, might fall in, you know, a woman might fall into zina, adultery, or you know, or, or theft, or like a really, really major sin, but the believer can't be a liar. He cannot be a liar. That's such a hated attribute that once he has that, you know, as an acquired trait, then he's actually nullifying his own belief. SubhanAllah. Making sure you speak the truth. What else did we talk about? What else falls under the category of truthfulness? Those of you who attended today. What else? Truthfulness in without it's up. In what? What else? Action. Huh? Action. Truthfulness in action? A little more specific. In promises. Truthfulness in your promises? Okay. Truthfulness in your actions, truthfulness in your intentions. When you say you're going to do something with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how much do you really try to do that thing? Or how, what do you, are you really, when you say, when you say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or when you make the intention to do something, because we always say make the intention. And let me, let me give you guys an example of this, all right? How many times have we sat in this halakha? And I said, everyone make the intention to come to Fajr. How many people are going to start coming to Fajr? A lot of people raised their hands. A lot of people said, yeah, we're going to do it. I'm looking all of you in the eyes. <laughs> so if you think I'm targeting you, it's all you. It's targeting. Right? Oh, I'm going to start coming to Fajr. I'm going to start coming to Fajr. But while you're saying it, you're probably telling yourself, like, I'm really not going to be coming to Fajr every day. Who am I kidding? I'm only kidding myself. Shaitan comes and casts doubts on your intention. And you even know it. You know that you're not telling the truth. You know that you're making this up. Right? Because sometimes we say things in the heat of the moment, but we don't really mean it. Right? And there is a, a very, uh, there is a very beautiful dari by the name of Talib uh, Abdul uh, Rashid, who is one of the, one of the people who accepted Islam on the hand of Imam Siraj Allah, Imam Siraj Al And this guy, SubhanAllah, used to be involved in a lot of drugs. A lot of drugs. And he was telling me, he was telling me the story one time. He said that one time when he was running away from the cops, that's when he first started to, to realize this tawheed, calling upon Allah, because that's when you start calling upon Allah when bad things happen in life. And he's calling on Allah and he's saying, Oh Allah, I promise you I'm going to quit. I promise you I'm going to quit this. I promise you I'm going to quit that. But he said that even while I was saying that, I was being selective with my words. And I was thinking them up. And I was already trying to think of the back door. I was already trying to think of the excuse I'm going to make to not quit. Right? So already whenever you're making the intention to start doing this and to and to leave this sin and to come to the, whatever it is, to, to acquire this good deed, this good deed, you're already putting in the back of your mind, what are the what are the loopholes here? You know, it's like when you're signing a contract, you want to make sure that the fine print is in your favor. Right? So even when you're making your intention with Allah, you're already making sure the fine print is in your favor. Right? And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Ismail alayhi salam sadiq al -wa He was truthful to his promise. Ismail alayhi salam, his dad comes to him to slaughter him. <laughs> his dad's going to kill him. And he says to his dad, he says, did Allah command you to do this? Yes. He said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to do this, then you're going to find me amongst those who are patient. I'm not going to complain about it. That's one thing, but whenever your dad goes, Shh, what's going to happen then? Whoa, dad, 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 I'm a prophet, you're a prophet, chill, you know, don't do this. We don't need to do it this way. Just say, yeah, yeah, Allah, it's all going to be okay, you don't have to kill me now. No, he just sat there and he looked at his dad. He waited. Okay, Allah commands you to do this. If I told you I'm going to be patient, I'm going to be patient. So whenever you make an intention with Allah, make sure that you're serious about it. Make sure that while you're saying while you're saying what you're saying, while you're making that intention, you really mean it. Oh Allah, I'm gonna change. Right? And sometimes even when we're making dua, you try to make your, your language vague. Right? Because you're trying to make sure that you can still leave yourself a loophole. Now there's two extremes here. And the Sahaba discouraged both of these extremes. One of those extremes is to take oaths on yourself. Right? To say, oh Allah, I swear to you and I swear by this and I swear by that. I'm going to quit this. If I don't quit this, may you destroy my house and send lightning on me. Don't take oaths on yourself because you might fall back. And Allah is merciful enough to accept you if you make tawbah again. Right? 
The other extreme is when you're not even willing to say, you're not willing to make any promises to Allah. You're not willing to make any promises to Allah. So you're not really truthful with your words. You're not truthful with your intention. And you know what? Once the time comes where you need Allah, you always need Allah. But when you feel like you need Allah because everyone else has turned their backs upon you, and you start calling upon Allah, you expect Allah to answer you just like that. Without any questions asked. And then when Allah doesn't answer you, you say, how come God doesn't love me? Why doesn't Allah answer me? Right? I tried dua. The Imam kept talking about dua. Mom and dad kept talking about dua. Where is Allah now? Why didn't Allah help me in this situation? Why didn't Allah help me in that situation? And you forgot all of the empty promises, the broken promises you made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of the intentions that you made. Oh Allah, I'm going to start reading this much Quran. Oh Allah, I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to stop committing this sin. Oh Allah, I'm going to stop doing this. You know how many times, how many of you guys are on Facebook, be honest? I know some of you are lying. <laughs> Just talk about that. It's okay, right? Everything can be used for halal and haram, right? It's okay, guys. How many times have you seen people say, I'm going to deactivate my Facebook, and I'm never going to be on Facebook again? And then two weeks later, they're back on Facebook doing the same thing. <laughs> Like, I'm going to deactivate Facebook and I'm never going to do this again because I don't want to talk to girls anymore and I want to make sure that I do the right thing and I want to make sure that my life is halal and I'm changing now. Deactivate. Then two weeks later, reactivate it. Then you see in the news feed, blank blank says to blank blank, what's up girl? <laughs> it's like, wait, what happened? You just said two weeks ago you were quitting. You deactivated. What happened? You didn't even believe yourself whenever you said you were quitting. You weren't truthful to yourself, so how do you expect your, your, your action to go through? Your intention wasn't real. Your intention wasn't truthful. Right? It's just like this. You tell me, if you tell me, let's say that you did something to hurt me. You cursed me out. And I say, look man, I'm not going to be your friend anymore if you keep cursing me out. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. And you say, alright, I promise you, I'm not going to curse you out anymore. Next time we have a fight, you curse. Then I say, look, I already told you, I, I quit, I quit. The third time we do it, the fourth time we do it, what am I going to say? I'll be like, you know what? You know you're lying. You and I both know that you're not telling the truth. Make sure when you make a promise to Allah, you don't have hesitation. You don't use vague language. You don't think of the loopholes. Oh Allah, I promise you I'm going to do this. Oh Allah, I promise you I'm going to do that. Right? A lot of people, let me tell you what happens whenever you get older, right? A lot of people will say, will make this oath with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I get rich, I'm going to give money. When I get rich, I'm going to give 25% of my wealth face of Eidullah. Then when they get rich, they start thinking, well, what 25% am I talking about? Am I talking about 25% of my retained earnings after my lavish vacations and after buying my lavish this and lavish that? What am I talking about here? You start trying to twist the language and find the loophole. But when you're truthful with Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not hesitate to answer you. And I'll give you this example, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm remembering this hadith, by the way, off the top of my head, so I might forget one, one of these things. Three men in a cave, Rasulullah tells us about them. They're trapped in a cave, a stone has trapped them, they're trapped by a boulder. So they all say to each other, let's make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our good deeds to remove this stone. Let's, let's start remembering the things that we did. You know, so and, 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 and saying those things so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove it. Right? And there's three situations. I can remember two off the top of my head. I might think of the third one as I say it. One person says, Oh Allah, I had a situation. Basically, he had a girl who he who needed help and he gave her charity. She was she was a cousin of his. She was she was related to him. She and he gave her charity, he helped her out of a tough situation on the condition that you know, she would, she would get intimate with him. She would commit sin with him. And just as he was approaching her, she said, do not, do not um, overstep what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. Right? So he said, I backed off and I said, Niyaha, right then and there. I could have done it. I was in a position where I could have done exactly what I said I was going to do. But out of my fear for you, I stepped back. Right? So the boulder moved a little bit. And another one, was a person who said that I had some food and some drink and I had my family at home and they were, you know, they were hungry and they were thirsty. 
And by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm qualifying this statement from now. The hadith is something like this, so it's not exactly this wording because I'm, I'm remembering off the top of my head. Maybe Salam, if you remember the hadith, you can help me. Do you remember the hadith? Okay. He goes to, so he says that I had some food and some drink and I was going, and my, and my family was hungry and needed it, but I knew that my parents needed it too. Right? So he went to his parents and his parents were sleeping. So he could have left his parents' house and he could have took that over to his own family and given them the food and the drink. But instead, he waited there and he waited by his parents' side until they woke up and then he gave them the food and the drink. Right? So he's, he makes da'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by that. Oh Allah, you, knew the, you know the situation that I was in. And I could have, you know, I could have easily just, just ignored them and moved on with my life, but I didn't. And that was only out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the boulder moved. Does anyone remember the third one? Isn't it the, the man who came and left him some more sheep or some goats and he raised them and then he got up? And then they were... Then he gave off. it back to him when he came back? And when the man After came a few back, years back. Give me the whole thing. The man had a worker and then the worker forgot his bag of seed and then like he raised a bunch of sheep with it and he gave him the sheep and the worker came back for his pay. After so a few years he, he demanded... All of you are talking, so I'm trying, I'm trying to see who knows it best. <laughs> so, Song, what is it? Final word. Uh, what was the first part you said? He left some seeds? Yeah, he had a, the payment for the work was a bag of seeds. And so with, it, huh? it was some dirham or seeds. So some dirhams he left. And uh -huh. He bought some ships. And then he raised the ships. And then after a few years, the other men came back and demanded that these ships, I mean, where is my money? And the man told him, with that money I raised these ships, so you, you can take all of them. Okay, so a man took a wage for, for some seeds, this is the gist of it, and he raised some sheep for that person, and, and he took the, that money, he took it as a loan. Whenever the person came back asking for the money, he told him, I used that money to raise all of these sheep, and he gave that sheep, all of it, to that person. All out of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did not get cheap with it. So it hurt him with his money. And he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know that I was telling the truth in this situation. You know, oh Allah, I was in a situation where I could have cheated, but I didn't. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused that boulder to move out of the way completely. The point is, is that three men that were in a very tough situation, but they feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were truthful with what they said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, whenever you say that you're going to do something for Allah, make sure that you really believe yourself when you say it. Don't, don't let it be half-hearted, right? You know, and, and this is something that's extremely important, especially in the society that we live in. Let me tell you why. Let me put it to you this way. The, what is halal and what is haram is extremely blurred. No one really knows what's halal and what's haram anymore. Because no one bothers to go look into it. I judge what's halal and what's haram based upon what my culture says, based upon what my family sees as halal and haram. So whenever I want to do something right, or whenever I want to start doing something halal, I don't bother to go find out what the Prophet said about this and what, this, what the actuality of this is. I just do it, right? And I'll do it according to my standards. Right? So, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to start applying this, I want to start applying that. Making sure that you're honest with yourself enough to go and find out, is this halal or is this haram? You know, some people, when you tell them that something is haram, they say, man, why did you have to tell me? I was doing fine. You know, why did you, you could have left me ignorant. If I was ignorant, then I wouldn't have been charged for it. Some people go out of their way to find out their practices. When I get into this business, when I, when I do this, when I do that, you know, my dress, my, the, the way that I do this, the way that I'm acting with this person, is it halal or is it haram? They go into detail trying to find it, not based upon their desires. They go and they try to find the most correct position based upon correctness, what is closest to Allah and His Messenger وسلم, Not based upon, you know, this will fit me more and this is more lenient and this will fit me more. Right? Now here's the last thing. And, and this is, this is where I, what the message that I really want you guys to take home. Do not fool yourself with what is haram. If you forget everything I said in this kalama, don't fool yourself with what is haram. Right? You know something in front of you is not right. You know something that you're doing is not right. Don't let shaitan give you all of those fatwas, give you all of those things that you want to hear so that you can convince yourself that it's right. 
You have to be honest enough with yourself to say, you know what, I don't feel too comfortable with this. Let me go figure it out. Let me go check this out. Let me go ask about this. Don't just take things at face value and then try to try to you know rationalize everything so that you can make everything halal. Because once you do that, you're leading yourself to destruction. So what I'm going to do, inshallah, I'm going to show you guys a, uh, a video. This video is uh, Sheikh Kamal Mekki. So this is a, a new show that they started in Canada. It's called Amongst the Few, ATF, the ATF YouTube channel. Right, and it has a bunch of uh, little khawatir and things of that by some of the brothers and things of the sort. So anyway, this one, it's actually 10 minutes long. I'm just going to show you guys the last six minutes. Inshallah, then we'll talk about that afterwards. All right, so this one's called Brownie Surprise. Okay. I, I fast forwarded through the beginning. Someone hit the lights. So it's a brownie. <laughs> About being honest and truthful with yourself and with the lost contact. Hello, and welcome to my passport. This used to happen to me in Brownie surprise. So like I said, we're going to make brownie surprise. And this is a very nice and wholesome dessert that you can make and enjoy with your family. And I have all the ingredients that you need for this dessert. The first thing, you do need one egg. As you can see in this bowl, I have one egg. And this is actually a free-range chicken, vegetarian fed, and so it's organic eggs. Because we want only the best ingredients for this meal. The second thing you need is a box of brownie mix. And this just happens to be my favorite brand, which is a Betty Crocker. And so this is a box of Betty Crocker brownie mix. And as you can see, I've already emptied the contents into this bowl right here. Now the last thing we need is one fourth of a cup of vegetable oil, and I have that already over here. And of course, a big bowl so you can mix all the ingredients into. And I have here also a glass baking pan. Now you can use the metal baking pan if you like, but I actually like the glass baking pans because the brownies and the things don't stick to it after you get it out of the oven. And the last, but not least, the last and most important ingredient, the surprise. And so he tells them, why not? 
and he used the same argument that they gave. It was just a little of it that's dirty, and the rest of it is all good, good ingredients. So the kids understood that even though a little was bad and the majority was good, it still made the whole thing bad. Just like when it comes to the brownies, the same thing should apply to the movies. And the story goes that from that point on, whenever the kids would say, you know, there's a movie that's out and it has a few scenes in it, but they would ask permission from their father, can we go and see it? He would tell them, would you like me to cook up a batch of brownies? Okay, so that's it for this week's episode of ATF Channel. I would like you to share with me down there some of the things that you left for the sake of Allah. Tell me more of this stuff and how it helped and how it improved your life and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced you with better. Don't forget, next week, Muhammad Hassan with more of the good stuff. Thanks for watching. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's not over yet. Chef Kamal Haki is the coolest chef I've ever met in my life. Come That's the end. <laughs> Alright, so there's still a very, very important moral in the story. By the way, I cut through half of it. Everybody got the point. And it's a very, very, very good point because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds to the Quran. By the way, Shaykh Kamal Maki is, is a master's degree from Madin University. <laughs> he just likes to do this kind of stuff to prove his point. Um, and it's actually a really good channel. If you go look it up, amongst the few ATF, every week they, they started doing this a few months ago. Every week they release a topic. It's really, really, really nice. The point is, again, it's a really, really important point. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, "Ya Yudadina Amnu," or, or "Do not." Or the, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala when He addresses those who believe, "Bima tanbi sulhaqa bil baqi." He's talking about Bani Israel, actually. "Bima tanbi sulhaqa bil baqi." Wa taktum alhaqa wa antum ta'amu. Do not dress your truth with falsehood. Don't dress something that's good with something that's not good and then try to make it all good. And then hide the truth, which you know to be the truth, while you, when, you, when you know exactly what you're doing. Right? And this would stop a lot of excuses. And Imam Hassan al-Basri said, when the human being stops making excuses for himself, shaitan has no madkhal inside of him. Shaitan has no entrance inside of him. Because essentially, all shaitan does for you is he constantly makes excuses for you. Uh, she's, she's just a friend and all that type of stuff. You know, I don't really look at her as a girlfriend. I don't really think anything's cut off. We just talk, we just smile, we just laugh. We're not flirting, we're just being friendly. You know, we, whenever I touch her, I'm not actually touching her like in that way. I never really mean that, that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, you're really just fooling yourself. But you can't fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you lie to yourself, at the end of the day, you alone, and you're the one that's going to be held accountable. Right? And subhanahu wa like when you know, a sister starts to wear hijab, and, and hijab is everything should be covered except for the face and the hands. But then the dresses start to come up to like right here, and then right here, and then right here, and then the pants start to come up like mid-calf and stuff like that. You're not fooling anybody. You're not fooling anybody. You're only fooling yourself. At the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold you accountable. I'm sorry if that was offensive. But it's, it's, the, it's a fact. Don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. When Allah reveals something to you, don't lie to yourself. When you know something is true and Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa say, stop there, don't say, well, it's not all that bad, and most of it is good, and this is okay, and this is okay, and this is okay. Why do you got to focus on the bad stuff? Because at the end of the day, you're going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that sin, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is most merciful with you. He already gave you enough halal. He already gave you enough things that you could do to make your life easy and to make your life halal. You don't have to go looking around for the halal. You don't have to go lying and, and disguising the truth so that you can make your life a little bit more convenient. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us inshaAllah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us firm on the truth. Uh, who's going to be my two minute reflection, reflection guy right now? If, if no one comes forward, I'm going to point him out. I'm going to call someone out. Don't, don't go back to this. Come on, you guys were doing so good, mashallah. Don't go back to this. 
You gotta be confident. Say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reflect on this. Just two minutes, inshallah. Two minutes to share your advice. All of you? Even my leaves are gone? What happened? You guys are gonna be doing khutbah next month. <laughs> Don't make me leave feeling like a failure. Come on, somebody was gonna reflect for two minutes, inshallah. I'm gonna leave the microphone right here. I know you're not going to shy away, so. Zakallah. Bismillah, salatu wassalam ala rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa Inshallah, I think the Imam covered the topic pretty well. Uh, during the khutbah and uh, in, uh, during the uh, youth halqa. Uh, I think I'm just going to add just a little bit, a little bit of a twist, inshallah. So, uh, in the topic of being truthful, uh, when you want to be truthful, you want to be truthful with yourself, truthful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in terms of everything that we talked about today. But you don't necessarily have to tell everything, the whole story, inshallah. So, when it comes to being truthful, something that happened, something that you did, you don't necessarily have to tell everybody about everything that you did, all the sins and everything like that. Um, some of the people, like for example, I have a person that I work with, and, um, you know, he'll start telling me about himself and what he did that day and what else happened. And, you know, he's in a position of leadership. And then the person, you know, the other people have heard, oh, you did this and you did that. And, and well, you're supposed to be the leader. And how can we trust you and things like that? You know what I mean? So when we want to be truthful, uh, we don't necessarily have to say everything about, our, about ourselves. And uh, I think I had mentioned once before, uh, there's a man who came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Amr um, was in their presence. And he said, oh, Messenger of Allah, I did this, this, and this with this woman, right? And then Umar radiallahu anhu said, oh, you, uh, you had revealed yourself after Allah had screened you, right? Allah, that means that he had committed this sin, but he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had uh, covered it for him, so everybody else didn't know about this sin. And then, uh, to, like, to, to make the long story short, you know, uh, uh, this man, he gets upset and he leaves, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the ayah, uh, following up a bad deed with a good deed. Uh, but, Whatever the case was, in this case, uh, this person was talking about his sins. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had, uh, had um, although he, he, he made this sin, this is between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the person that he made the sin with. So you should seek forgiveness for your sins, but you don't have to make it apparent. So I'm just adding a little bit to the uh, being true, true, uh, truth and true. Is that what i So exposing your sins is an exception to that. Barakallah. The only time that, that you should expose your sin is when? When should you expose your sin? What's that? Huh? When you're seeking help, right? So Islam doesn't say hide your sin. If you know, it's not like the elephant in the room type thing where you ignore it. Seeking help for it is something that the Ritman said you can do, you can do. So if it's a sin that you need help with, seeking advice, how to get over with it, you know, how to get over it, then there's nothing wrong with seeking advice for inshallah. But other than that, you don't have to go out and blur out everything that you do uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concealed you, because that uh, lessens your chance of redemption, right, of really redeeming yourself. Anybody have any questions? Anyone want to add anything? Messing up or slipping up on your own intentions, you have your friends there to hold you accountable. 
So I guess I was just thinking about this would be like it's made a lot easier if you're in the right setting with the right group. And if you're not, it becomes harder and harder until basically you forgot what you're doing in the first place. That's all I had. And the last thing, um, I'll just mention this. Make sure you don't just believe in Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Make sure you believe Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi When you see something in the Quran, when you see something in the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi don't hesitate. Don't, don't sit there and try to analyze it with your own logic and say, well, this doesn't make much sense, this doesn't make much sense, this doesn't make much sense. You have to believe Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not just believe in Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi because those are two totally different things. And what made Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu as Siddiq, the truthful one, when the Prophet Sallallahu comes to him and says, Abu Bakr, I'm a prophet, okay, I believe you, what do you want me to do? You know? Abu Bakr, I went, you know, from Jerusalem to Mecca, I mean, from Mecca to Jerusalem to, uh, to the heavens and came back in one night, I believe you. There is absolutely no hesitation in accepting that from Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? So, Accepting what comes from Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu is also an aspect of following the truth. Anybody else want to add anything? Any of you guys? say, even if you go do something that may be halal for you, it can always benefit you, that uh, you can always change your intention. Like, for instance, you can say, I'm going to go meet up with my friend to do so-and-so go swimming. Make the intention to also do it for the sake of the law, and now you have a benefit to it. Just like if we're going to go play a sport, and then someone says, hey, I'm going to pay you to play this sport, we're going to do it. We're going to do something where we have fun, and we get a benefit from it. So we can do the same thing with our intentions, and that's one thing that uh, hit me and I thought about. Um, any of you, and I'm, I'm, I, I would never do this, but I'm going to do it right now. Uh, if you get a chance to attend next week's football, then do that, inshallah, because I'm going to tell a story about someone who's uh, very beloved um, and a modern day person who really um, embodies being truthful to oneself. So if you get a chance, inshallah, do come to the football, inshallah, time. Uh, I wanted to tell it today, but I didn't want to start the story and then have to cut it short. Uh, like I did with the other three. So we're ta we'll talk about that in also next week. Anybody else? Anyone else? Good hesitation. You guys are caving in them one by one. I'm not going to force you to talk. Anybody else? Khalas? Fine. Try your best to make it to the convention next week, inshallah, in Houston. It's going to be really amazing, inshallah, time. And I hope that I'll see all of you guys there. Assalamu uh, alaikum.